Hello world, this is Dennis, and for today's video I'll be going over my top five shortwave radios. Um, now this list is for the radios that I currently own. Um, I was kind of thinking about um, going over the radios I have owned over my years of uh, collecting and listening to shortwave radio, but I didn't think that would be fair, so I'm just sticking to radios I currently own. And to start off this list at number five, I would have to go with the Texan PL880. Um, it's a portable shortwave radio and in my opinion um, it's one of the best out there. Um, it's got a lot of functions to it. Um, the sound from the speaker, whoops, <laughs> the speaker is just amazing. Um, like I said, it's got a lot of features to it. Um, the selectivity and sensitivity of this radio is just amazing. Plus, I really like that it has where you can plug in an external antenna. So, if you live in a situation like I do where it's, you know there's a lot of RF interference, um, you can just plug in an outdoor antenna, which I have, and you can you know get better reception. Although, on some nights um, when the RF um, interference in the my house is as bad. I can just use the telescopic antenna, whip antenna here, and just tune around the band. So I was amazed at uh, what I was picking up the other night when I was uh, playing around with that uh, radio that I picked up from Goodwill the other day. So this is quite the performer, and you know, I like the way it looks. It's got a nice, um, sleek design. Um, the display is pretty big. The buttons are good size. You can read all the lettering and everything and the numbers uh, it all comes out pretty good plus I love radios that have these little kickstands on them so I can just put on my desk like this and do 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 you know tune around the bands so that's number five the Texan PL880 okay for radio number four it would have to be the Yesu FRG7, this one right here, the good old workhorse. Um, out of all the analog radios that I own, um, this one is the most accurate when it comes to the uh, the tuning dial. With um, all the other ones, the uh, the Halicrafters S40B, the Realistic DX160, well, heck, even the Hammerland HQ100A, the tuning dials are off. Um, I know that I could probably fix that um, with a proper alignment, but I don't know how to do that stuff yet, so that's something to be taken care of in the future. But um, other than the <laughs> tuning dial being accurate, the um, audio from the built-in speaker is amazing. Um, this is one of my favorite radios to listen to. The only drawback is um, I like to listen to the you know ham operators a lot on single sideband, and if there's, you know, a lot of stations, um, you know, operating at the time, there's a lot of splatter over the frequencies because um, the bandwidth for this thing isn't as narrow as I would like it. Yet again, there probably is a way to, you know, open it up and adjust that or something to install, but I'm not yet at that point where I can do stuff like that. So that's why this radio, which is a really good radio, is at number four. It performs well, but, you know, on the single sideband, you know, there are some issues. That's why it's lower on the list. So number four is the Yesu FRG7. Now for number three, this was a, um, this was a hard choice between my, uh, two tube type radios which one I like the best um, overall I really enjoy using tube type radios they got nice sound um, they perform pretty well but I would have to say between the Halicrafters and the Hammerland um, the Hammerland is my favorite to use um, it does not have its own built-in speaker so I have to use an uh, external speaker but the audio quality that I get out of that thing is just absolutely amazing Plus, the one-up that the Hammerland has over the Halicrafters is that it's got an S-meter. Um, the Halicrafters does not have an S-meter, and for me, <laughs> I don't know why, but that's a must for my radios. It's got to have an S-meter because I love watching it, you know, going back and forth with the signals and stuff. Plus, this thing is just really nice to operate. Um, 
My one complaint with it is, um, it's not too bad if I let the thing warm up for a while. Um, it drifts like a son of a gun on single sideband. But like I said, if it's been running for over an hour or so, it doesn't drift as bad. It still drifts a bit, but, you know, it's more tar tolerable. Um, this one is definitely a hands-on radio when you're listening to single sideband. If you're just tuning around listening to broadcasts and AM, it's, you know, just fine. But um, overall, I like the look of this thing. Um, like the Yesu FRG7, which I forgot to mention in uh, on the, the number four part. Um, I just love the look of it. The This um, grayish color. I like the big knobs and everything. The tuning dials, the switches, everything. Um, I love old radios, and I love big radios. To me, it's not a radio if it's, you know, small. <laughs> That's why I don't get into portables as much, although I'm starting to, to a little bit because they're easier to collect and, you know, easier to store. But overall, if I want a shortwave radio, it's got to be big. <laughs> so number three is the Hammerland HQ100A. Okay, for number two, we have the Kenwood R2000, finally getting a digital radio here. This has to be my favorite radio for tuning around the amateur radio bands. Um, actually, I have them all programmed into the presets here, except for this one, which, you know, I can't remember what's programmed on there right now. I think it might be a local AM station, but I'm not 100% sure I'll have to find out when I turn the thing back on again and listen to it. But, um... Overall, this is a really nice radio. Yet again, it's big. There's lots of buttons and, you know, dials and stuff. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, turn the volume down. Let's just turn it on real quick so you can see the display. Really nice display. Um, it's got really nice S meter. Gotta love those. Um, the sound quality out of the speaker is perfect in my opinion. I usually like to pref uh, prefer for sound quality, um, Lower um, in tone audio, a lot of bass. I don't like um, high treble and stuff. That's why, if you notice here on the tone dial, I've got turned down to like uh, number two on there because uh, that's what I prefer to listening to. I don't like um, higher pitched stuff. So, this is the one that I usually like to use when I'm listening to the amateur radio bands. Um, I love that it has this clock. Um, feature on you have two different settings. I have the local time and I got the UTC time on there And it's also got a timer which I'm assuming will you know turn it off and turn it on again uh, Never use that don't really have a use for it um, I like the different um, tuning speeds that you got here with the tuning dial you got your slow medium fast and Obviously if you want more information on this check out my review that I did a couple videos ago um, but overall, um, this is my second favorite uh, radio to use. Um, there is one drawback with it, though. Um, in my opinion, all my radios have a drawback or two. Um, I don't like to... Um, if I'm trying to listen to something specific, this isn't exactly my favorite radio to use because um, it does not have a direct entry keypad. Um, if I want to listen to something specific, I either have to put on fast and tune it real fast, or use the up and down buttons here and then tune to the desired frequency. Yeah, you could say this is maybe being nitpicky and me being a little bit lazy, but um, I usually like to use this radio for you know ham radio use and just general um, tuning around bands. I do have a radio that I like to use specifically if I want to listen to specific frequencies. And I got a feeling everybody will know which one it is. So let's go on to number one. And here it is, number one, the ICOM IC-R75. Now, if this video may, would have been made a year ago, I would have said that my number one radio would have been the Grundig Satellite 750. But after having this bad boy for a couple of months and tuning around with it, um, it has replaced the Grundig 
as my favorite shortwave radio slash communication receiver. Um, as you can tell, the Grundig is no longer here on my desk. I've got it on my the headboard of my uh, bed because I usually I just use it for casual listening now for hardcore tuning around the bands. That's what this monster is for. Nice, great, big display, great, big tuning dial, lots of buttons, lots of knobs. It is amazing. The sound quality isn't quite what I would like it to be. I'm kind of thinking about getting a uh, external speaker for it. But um, other than that, um, this thing is nice. It has all kinds of features you can play around with. You can have two different antennas on this. Um, granted, right now I only have one hooked up to it, which, you know, that's all I need. Um, it has a clock function, although the radio has to be turned on for you to be able to see it. Ooh, and I just noticed you can't see how the display looks. So, okay, going to get a little shaky here for a second because I'm taking the webcam off the tripod. Let's try looking at this from an angle, see if you can see the display better. And that's also well. That's another nice thing. You can adjust the brightness on here. You can adjust um, how low the beeps are for the buttons. You can adjust the uh, tuning speed. You got your um, twin passband um, uh, tuning knobs. Um, can't quite remember what those are for, but that's for adjusting. Well, obviously the the bandwidth. Um, you got single sideband, CW, RTTY. You got a filter button, AM, FM, and a tuning speed. So this thing is just a monster. Plus, it's got a direct entry keypad. So if I want to tune into a specific frequency right away, beep, 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 and there we go. I've got it tuned in. Um, there's still stuff on here I'm still learning about um, every day or, you know, sometime. Well, not every day, but... Um, uh, every once in a while, I break out the ex instruction manual and see if there's something else I missed. And like I said, I'm still learning about different features on this thing. But overall, for you know, listening, tuning the bands, and everything, this one has to be my favorite radio. Now, you know, this may all change in the future because you know my radio collection is you know in flux. You know. After a while, sometimes I get sick of certain radios and stuff, because as you can tell, um, I no longer have the Radio Shack DX394A. I got rid of that one, because this radio does have a hell of a lot better job than that one did. So, that may change in the future, but for now, these are my top five shortwave radio slash communication receivers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, peace and all that good stuff.